pebble from my hand. Find those men. Return the chalice. I have come for the chalice. There ain't no chalice. Chalice. Only one way to get it. folks and welcome to the Spaghetti Theater for the Spaghetti Theater review. This time I'm going to review an episode of the classic and original TV series Kung Fu, the one from the 70s. Another show I absolutely love and own every episode of on glorious DVD. Right? Pretty cool, huh? Love this show. Three glorious seasons. And I'm going with season two's episode entitled the chalice! That's right, got my own chalice for the episode. I chose this episode for a special reason, too. Its special guest villain is none other than one of the greatest bad guy character actors of all time. In my opinion, of course. William Smith, everybody! Who sadly died back in 2021, at the age of 88. So with his birthday approaching on the 24th of March, I wanted to do him another homage with this review. I first did a tribute video to William Smith back in 2021, and to my shock, it was viewed by his wife, who absolutely loved it. Ah, ah, I guess it could be a little better. It does sort of look more like a weathered Jim Carrey or something. And even sent me a copy of the poetry book that he had published. Yeah, check that shit out. I've done many videos on this subject. In case you're curious about William Smith's poetry book. And in return, I sent her the painting that I did in that tribute video. So now it's hanging up in his house, which is awesome. So with that explained, let's get to the episode of Kung Fu already. So real quick, in case you are unaware, Kung Fu is all about the adventures of Kwai Chang Kang, or just Kane. It's easier. A half American, half Chinese man wandering the post-Civil War American West in search of his all-American brother, who's as American as Kenny Rogers. But then again, so is David Carradine, who plays Kane, and as far as I know, is not of half-Chinese descent. Because if he was, he would probably look more like Brandon Lee, star of the smash hit film Laser Mission. Laser Mission! Now with 100% fewer lasers and barely a trace of mission. So Kane wanders the Old West in search of his long lost brother. Since he is also a fugitive, this guy, he was also the guy from Gremlins. So this show is basically the fugitive, only in the Old West. And the fugitive is also another show that I own every episode of on glorious DVD. Not as impressive because they're all burned, so they're in this like not as cool box, but they're there. Only in this, Richard Kimball is a half American, half Chinese guy looking for his brother and not the one-armed man. This is a formula that would be done again yet in another series years later. The Incredible Hulk. Remember that one? And yes, I own all of those too on glorious DVD plus the death of the Incredible Hulk TV movie. Take that, society. So yeah, it's a bloody formula but it bloody works. And there you have it, folks. The simple plot to Kung Fu. Just remember that Kane was raised as a Shaolin monk in the Shaolin monk temple in China. Raised to be a priest and trained in the arts of Kung Fu. Yeah, and damn is he good. Too good. He's like the Mary Sue of Kung Fu. Pretty much unbeatable. But he's not a perfect guy, obviously. And like MacGyver, doesn't believe in using guns. And he also doesn't wear shoes either because, uh, it's against his religion, I guess. And he plays a big long flute all the time too. To, uh, well, pass the time as he walks barefoot across the west in search of Kenny Rogers. Or at least one of his restaurants. What am I doing? Let's get to the freaking episode already. The chalice, take it away. So Kane strolling across the beach now, playing his big flute. Just like in Kill Bill. More than likely, that's what Tarantino was referencing. Only I swear he made the flute even bigger and longer. And right off the bat, we're thrown into some action. As Kane witnesses these four thugs 
chase down this Padre on horseback and his chalice! Yeah! Right off the bat, the chalice is here, folks. Basically a huge holy grail cup. And boy, does this stupid cup cause a lot of problems. As this Padre is executed in cold blood for it. As they ride away laughing. Nice work, guys. Way to kill a Padre for a cup. Jesus wouldn't drink out of a gold cup anyway, remember? He was a carpenter. I saw Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade so many times as a kid. So Kane runs to this guy's aid, of course, as he lie there dying on the beach, and goes on about how he actually stole that chalice that he just died for. I am Benito Cardona, an unworthy priest who has stolen the great chalice. A great chalice that he stole from his mission, which is sacrilege, of course. So he begs Cain here, a fellow priest, to go find that great chalice and return it to the Padre at his mission so his soul can go to heaven or some shit. I'm not very religious, as you can see. Sorry, nothing against it. Tons of religious people in my family. They're all crazy. Promise. So, Cain nods in agreeance. So yeah, he'll go find those four murderous thugs for you. Guy I just met who stole that great chalice in the first place. Something he now regrets as he's dying. His overconnection to a physical object. That was not very religious of him. But Cain feels for this guy anyway. A fellow priest who is now dead. So, he decides to go into a flashback and reflect on his childhood. Yeah, that's another thing about Kung Fu. It would use flashbacks all the time to fill you in on Kane's past with a story that sort of relates to the one going on. So he's just a boy now, when he first arrived at the shallow end temple trying to get in. And was taken in by Master Khan here, who listens to his sob story all about how everyone he knows is dead. Your grandparents. Dead. Family, friends, dog, cat, goldfish, everyone dead. All dead. Except for that long lost brother Kenny Rogers, of course. However, Master Khan points out that it's always been customary to only admit full Chinese men into the shallow end temple for training in Kung Fu and uh, monking, I guess it's jungle call it. Red tape religion stuff. Yet, Master Khan is a pretty cool guy for a shallow end monk. He's a Captain Kirk of shallow end monks and says, BLAST REGULATIONS! Fuck that monk order handbook. There's a first time for everything. There is a first for everything. So you're in, pint-sized Carradine. Go shave your dang head. It's time for lesson number one. The classic, can you snatch that pebble from my hand bit. Great bit. Snatch the pebble from my hand. Which of course, child Kwai Chang Kang cannot do. So keep practicing, boy. Because according to Master Khan, once you can do that, you're a full-fledged friggin' monk priest. When you take the pebble from my hand, it will be time for you to leave. And it will be time for you to hit the road with your Kung Fu degree. Lots of places hiring for that in 1800s China, I'm sure. Bouncer at a local rice bar. I don't know. So snap back to the present. Time to stop daydreaming about the past and snatching pebbles. Because it's time for Kane to report to this mission as requested by the murdered Padre Benito. That was his name, Benito. I think I'm saying it right. I am Benito Cardona. Make restitution for me. Who, before dying, dropped this Padre's name on him. Padre Bragranza. Padre Braganza. Who's busy blacksmithing when Kane strolls up to deliver some bad news. The Padre then tells him that he's had enough bad news today with their whole great chalice being stolen and all. That's when Kane hands over the dead Padre's rosary beads like they were his friggin' dog tags from Normandy or something. He did die on the beach. He then tells the Padre the tale of his death and how he actually stole that chalice. And then he had to bury his ass right there on the beach before strolling barefoot all the way here just to fill you in. And he plans on going to get the friggin' chalice too, like he said. Because he's just that kind of a guy. Swell guy. Kind of guy you want on your side. The Padre then explains to Kane that that dead Padre guy not only built this whole mission, but he created that chalice too. Idiot, you made it, then stole it? That was dumb, you should have just made two. 
He made that himself. Got the gold, banged it up, glued those little blue things to the side. So then the Padre fills Kane in on who those four thugs were that killed the other Padre. They were a bunch of dumb idiots who also just recently stole a Gatlin gun. Yeah. They stole a Gatlin gun. From this guy who is not too friggin' happy when he opens up this crate and finds no Gatlin gun. Where's my Gatlin gun? And uh oh, that guy is none other than the great William Smith himself. Our main antagonist, of course. Here, he's playing a captain named Luther Staggers. Captain Luther Staggers. And, like pretty much every William Smith character, he's a bit mentally unstable and always on edge, ready to kill at the drop of a dime, could snap at any second at anyone that pisses him off in the slightest. So this fat idiot running the freight delivery company, aka UPS of the old west, losing his Gatling gun causes William Smith yeah, like I said, to lose his shit. Nice one, Cletus Hogg. Just for that, you're not getting credited for this episode. Go cry to boss, tubby. So yeah, that stolen Gatling gun was meant for Captain William Smith. Those four idiots are fucked now. William Smith is gonna tear your heads off and go bowling with them. Cletus here, who totally caves and tells him that the Gatling gun was... It's been stoled. Stoled? Is that how you say that? In Old West terms? It's been stoled. You better talk. Just look at those crazy eyes. Like you're some kind of an ant that he despises with all his heart. See, that's great acting. Just with a look. No one can do that better than him. Seriously. To me, of course. So now, Captain William Smith here has to head over to that mission. Since that's where it was mistakenly delivered in the first place, allowing those four idiots to steal it. This storyline relies heavily on the UPS of the Old West fucking up deliveries. And in a turn of normal events, Captain William Smith allows Cletus to live as long as he keeps his fat stupid mouth shut unless he's shoving a ho-ho into it. Wouldn't want to bury you in your own plow crate, you hear? You lucky shit, Cletus. <laughs> so cut back to the mission where we find Kane and the Padre as he explains some religious stuff about that dead Padre not being able to rest in peace until that chalice is returned. And we'll burn in hell forever if it's not. No joke. If the sin of stealing is not forgiven, the spiritual essence, and suffering hellfire forever. So, wow God, thanks for that one. Put the cup back on the shelf and you can go to heaven. But since you're dead, you better hope Cain does it for you. And he swears he will too. And from what I know about Cain, he fucking will. But why, may you ask? Is Cain willing to risk his life to return that stupid chalice for dead Mr. Padre, whose religion states that he can't even own things because it's a sin to be attached to physical objects? Well, it's as simple as he himself says. I understand it. Because Cain understands this guy. Well, that's cool, I guess. You can relate to this shit. Stealing your own great chalice. So let's find out more about Kane's days at the Shallowin Temple, as we're thrust into another flashback. Kane's older and balder now, and has finally mastered that pebble snatching shit. Meaning the pebble is now his! Way to go, Kane! You earned it. You passed. Now get the fuck out of here. Go kung fu stuff and spread the good monk word or some shit. It's jungle out there. And stay humble, Kane. Like the poop we so flush, barely be noticed until it's time to kick ass. So he leaves and reflects on his pebble and how he wanted it in his hand all these years. And now feels a connection to it, like the chalice. Get it? So he can relate, I guess. And as Master Khan explains, this is not as bad of a thing as you seem to think. The universe contains a certain pebble known as the Earth. And many are the men who have fond attachments to it. No less foolish than yours. It's just all part of being human, man. The Earth is a rock. A wise one, this Master Khan is. You gotta be to be a master shallowing monk. So back to the present day again, where we finally get to meet the Gatlin gun and get a closer look at the four idiots who killed that Padre. Then stole this Gatling gun from the mission. 
and like idiots, they're using it to shoot their very own fort up as they drink from the chalice like it was a regular cup or something. <laughs> idiots. And hey, it's No Nose again. Character actor Charles Deercock. He was in the original Star Trek episode, Wolf in the Fold. I also reviewed that. In the time since I reviewed that episode, Charles Deercock has passed away. So may you rest in peace, Charles Deercock. You were a great character actor. You will always be no nos. So they fuck around the Gatlin gun some more, and whoa! They almost hit Kane, who just comes strolling on in, unfazed by the fact that he was just nearly killed by a round of bullet fire. Then they start to aim, actually planning to shoot him down in cold blood. Sort of something they like to do. So, freeze frame! Commercial! But fuck that shit! Cut back to the mission, where we find Captain William Smith, who definitely can't be trusted, since he's wearing a belt and suspenders. And, as Henry Fonda has taught me, a man like that can't even trust his own pants. How can you trust a man who wears both a belt and suspenders? A man can't even trust his own pants. Good one, Henry Fonda. He's here looking for his Gatlin gun, of course, which the Padre tells him was stolen by a guy named Gilchrist and his gang. This guy! And he even tells him where to find them and to look out for his buddy Kane because he's headed there too so he can rescue that great chalice. But Captain William Smith doesn't give a fuck about any of that shit. I'm not looking for the Holy Grail. He just wants his Gatlin gun back. Now I have the chance to aid the cause of my fellow man below the border. So he can bring it to Mexico and kill a bunch of Mexicans? I guess it's unstable Captain William Smith, a former Confederate soldier looking for a new war to get in on. Don't ask too many questions. So thanks, Padre. Captain William Smith then pieces out and heads for Fort Dumbass. So let's cut to Fort Dumbass. As Kane asked them ever so nicely for that chalice, please. I have come for the chalice you stole from the priest. And they reply by calling him a dumb engine. Dumb chalice here, engine. Engine? Like a car engine? The Biaki Indians come with trespass. Oh, so they think he's an Indian. <laughs> Proving their dumbness once again as they claim to know nothing about a chalice that they're drinking out of right now, Cain even explains to them the dead Padre's ordeal. His soul would not rest until the chalice was returned to San Blas. Like they care. They're the ones who executed him in cold blood. So they tell this dumb truck engine to fuck off. When this guy who I guess is the smart one of the group points out that he's no car engine. They ain't no engine. Chinese. He's a Chinese. He must have got that shirt off a dead Chinese. Back to the feature three quote, folks. Technically, he's none of those things, though. He's just white guy David Carradine. That's when this guy Gilchrist decides he's going to execute Cain because his religion doesn't believe in hell. When... <laughs> Whoa! That was lucky. The Gatling gun jammed. He would have done it, too, though. Boy, Cain. The monk gods were smiling down on you that day. It's jungle out there. Yet he still stares down its barrels like a dumb idiot with that dumbfounded deer in the headlights expression. Da, uh, what's a Gatlin gun? The chalice was worth more than gold to Padre Benito. So now, realizing how valuable that chalice is to that mission, Gilchrist decides to tie Kane up and bring him back there and hopefully receive some sort of cash reward for it. And Kane is totally fine with this. Leaving the smart one of the group behind to Get yourself married to my new gun. Marry the Gatlin gun? I guess to each their own. And you think people want to marry weird shit these days. Do you, the smartest guy in the group, take this Gatlin gun to be your wedded wife? You may kiss the Gatlin gun. So they all leave with Kane as we pan over and see that good old Captain William Smith has found Fort Dumbass. He waits for them to be out of sight before heading on over as this recently engaged doofus starts fucking around with the gun. 
even though they said not to, giving Captain William Smith time to sneak into the fort and creep up behind this man-child of the Old West and punch him directly in the face, out cold. So success, he got his Gatling gun back. That wasn't so hard, didn't even kill anybody. It's a miracle! So he loads up all the ammo, ties the gun to his horse and leaves. Only nope, this doof regains consciousness just as he's leaving and fires off his pistol a couple of times. Getting the attention of Gilchrist and the gang, who, fearing for his stolen Gatling gun, rushes back to the fort. And when they get there, it's still gone, of course. And now William Smith is safely behind a rock with his Gatling gun and opens fire on the fort. And as usual, Kane decides to wander into the action, forcing William Smith to stop firing so he can pull out his pistol and meet this guy. Even compliments his English. I speak English. Speak the real nice to one. That's as much of a compliment as you're gonna get from him. He still manages to make it sound insulting though. Speak the real nice to one. He then goes right back to firing on Fort Dumbass as the dumbasses close the gate and somehow managed to not get shot. Kane then explains his whole quest to return that chalice again. Only yeah, William Smith don't give a fuck about your stupid chalice. He just wants to finish off these four idiots for stealing his Gatling gun. So fuck off, Kane. But once Kane has something to do, he does what's necessary to get it done. He's got a good work ethic, Kane. So William Smith threatens his life, as he likes to do with people he meets. You wanna die too? All you gotta do is say so. I'd be glad to oblige you. That's our William Smith. So realizing now that the Gatling gun that they stole belonged to the great Captain William Smith, Gilchrist, no-nos, smart one, and this guy all surrender because they know they haven't got a chance against Gatling gun toting William Smith. So white flag and all. They even offer him up the chalice to square things over. Don't belong to you, man. So Captain William Smith orders them to come on out then which they do, only William Smith sets up the Gatling gun to open fire again, which Kane does not approve of since they are surrendering. So he interferes with the only weapon he has, his hands, and stops them from firing as the four dumbasses take refuge back in the fort. Captain William Smith then warns him off, cause he's the one with the gun and plans to use it. So Kung Fu time, Hakiba, guns away, and a barefoot kick to the chest knocks the massive William Smith head first into this rock. Ouch! He may have brain damage. <laughs> well, I think he already does actually. Maybe it actually knocks some sense into him, but I doubt it. But either way, the mighty William Smith is down and out cold. For now. Back inside Fort Dumbass, these four dopes decide to wait it out till dark before making a run for it. So now with Captain William Smith unconscious, Kane takes this opportunity to toss his pistol, bam, and ruin his Gatlin gun by filling it with sand. Something that seems to make him very happy. Sand is fun! Unless you're Hayden Christensen. Captain William Smith wakes up just as he's doing this too. And points out how valuable that Gatling gun is. Gun's worth its weight in gold. Kane then explains to him that he plans on flushing those four idiots out of four dumbass before nightfall. Without any killing. So he can retrieve that chalice. And then Captain William Smith can have all four of them and turn them in for their rewards and go buy a new dang Gatling gun. There you go, Captain William Smith. Teamwork. Captain William Smith thinks his plan's so funny though that he even makes a racist joke. And I'll carry you out of there and I'll you in pieces. Oh, classic racist William Smith characters. He just hates everybody. Either way, he wants some kind of reimbursement for his Gatling gun. Because if he doesn't, as he puts it, well, and if I have to chase you across the state plains naked, I'll run you to the ground till I get it. So help me God. Across the state plains naked. Why naked? Chill out, William Smith. It would be hilarious to see that though. I do believe he's that crazy. So cut to later as Captain William Smith clears what sand he can out of his gun. Then we get a quote from Captain William Smith that defines the characteristics of every character William Smith has ever played, pretty much. You ever kill a man? Once you do, you're hooked for life. Hooked for life. Story of his character actor life. Way to go, William Smith. Way not to punch Chris Rock at the Oscars. Even though, with him you would expect it. What did you say about my wife? I'll pop you like a pimple. Keep my wife's name 
out of your mouth. I'm going to, okay? That was a greatest night in the history of television. You ever kill a man? So time for another flashback, everybody, to this bridge that becomes very familiar over the course of the series, where we get to see Kane confess to Master Khan that he killed the guy that murdered their good buddy, Master Poe, Gremlins guy, in Star Trek. So why didn't you run like hell, Kane, instead of staying to kill a guy? Well, he would have, only he didn't want to leave Gremlins guy dying there alone. Good old Master Poe. Plus, we need the plot to happen, or no wandering across America with no shoes on. So let's go visit Master Poe's grave, pay our respects in the sacred Mogwai Cemetery at the Shallowin Temple. He then picks up this white stone to keep as a souvenir, I guess. Master Khan then assures Kane that none of this avenging of your master's death has any effect on your priesthood as a Shallowin monk. It's jungle out there. However, you will have to go on the run and be the half-American, half-Chinese Richard Kimball of the old West. Here's a boat ticket to America. Now get the hell out of here before the Imperial police burn down the fucking temple looking for your ass. So let's cut back to the present time as we see that Kane has found a way to sneak into Fort Dumbass. Then does a Kung Fu slow motion silent ladder drop into a rolling barefoot kick to Gilchrist's face. But on a sadder note, it sends his plate of beans flying all over the place. Bud and Terrence would be appalled. Nice move though, now try that shit on Mythbusters. So cut to almost nighttime. Dusk, folks, as Captain Smith waits patiently outside Fort Dumbass. Soon to be renamed Fort David Carradine, because out of the fort strolls Kane, with all four dumbasses in custody. Well, that was super easy, barely an inconvenience. Kane's barefoot odor funk must be more powerful than I thought. And not only that, but he got that freaking chalice back. Way to go, Kane. Way to put those stupid hillbillies in their place. Even William Smith is a bit impressed. So cheers to you, Captain Psychopath of the Old West. So they all head back to the mission together. As a group, passing across that random beach again, Captain William Smith then questions Kane's dedication to that chalice since he himself can now see that it does have some cash value to it. He could buy more Gatlin guns with that. Yet, the cash value of anything doesn't mean dick to Kane, a man of the faith. He's like the Padre, objects mean diddly, except for that pebble in the chalice. Smith won't quit though, and now he wants Kane to become his partner, since he sees how skilled he is with his hands and bare feet, and could use him in Mexico. Use you in Mexico. You know, Killing Mexicans with Gatlin guns. And I just love Kane's response to this Mexico shit. I do not wish to be used in Mexico. He does not wish to be used in Mexico. That's like a Spock comeback. I do not wish to be used in Mexico. So Kane and Captain William Smith don't exactly see eye to eye. Kane has no intention of giving up that chalice or joining his revolution in Mexico. So give it up already. Only he won't. He's crazy, mentally unstable, and always ready to snap. A man who seemingly seeks out fighting and killing, whereas Kane tries to avoid it at all costs. Unless it becomes necessary, of course, and he's forced to barefoot kung fu you in the face and knock your beans everywhere. So of course, Captain William Smith won't just let this go and threatens to kill Kane once he reaches that mission for not being as crazy as he is. So pick a good burial spot, Kane. So when you get to that mission, you pick yourself out a nice, peaceful grave site. Then we fight. I'm gonna fight you your way. So Captain William Smith then takes off on his own, presumably to get to the mission first and wait for Kane and company to arrive. That's when this idiot points out the obvious. You're gonna fight? when the smart one of the group makes another clever observation. Nah, man like Kane's got better sense. And by that expression, even Kane seems flattered. Hey, thanks buddy, for noticing that I'm far more intelligent than you and your band of dipshits. Cut to Henrietta. What? Dorothy! As Kane makes it back to the mission, where William Smith waits, now wearing a classic William Smith sleeveless, so he can see the gun show he's so famous for. While shaving away, he even arranged for a marshal to get his ass down here, so he can get the reward 
I need four good old boys, never meaning no harm, as Cain fulfills his promise and returns the chalice to the Padre at the mission. Yay! That dead Padre won't burn in hell forever now. Well, that's a relief. You hear that, Padre Benito? You owe Cain big time. So, does this mean that Padre Benito briefly visited hell, but has now been upgraded in the systems of the afterlife, but no need to worry, because Cain just saved your soul? Then enter the three whip chain, the true star of this episode. That's why I'm wearing this. See, now you know. Plus, it's in the thumbnail. Because it's not just any chain, it's Captain William Smith's specially crafted for him, Death Chain. To your exact specifications, three chains. And why, do you ask? Does William Smith need a customized three chain whip? Now I handle a strong hickory thong for my wrist. With a hickory handle and leather wrist strap, one might ask. Well, even this guy, his chain manufacturer, is so curious, he just has to ask. Is it permitted to ask what this will be made to do? And is treated to a perfect William Smith response. To kill a hero. Just like him to kill a hero. You can see it in his eyes. His sanity is gone. Everyone must die by his big chain whip. So cut to the chalice as the Padre returns it to the tabernacle, which bores Cain so much that he slips into another flashback. This time, we find Cain hiding out inside of a confession booth at this Catholic mission somewhere in China, still on the run from the law. When the Imperial Police bust in and start pressing this father for information, and hey, it's Chief O'Hara from Batman. The fuck you doing out of Gotham City? He left the force to become a priest in China in the past. It's Father O'Hara to you. Don't make me call the Caped Crusaders. Only he's giving that all up, cause he's on fire for the Lord now! Father O'Hara then assures these officers that there's no shallow and monk fugitive here, and he just wants to get back to his praying to the Lord. So please get out and go find a real criminal. Like that dastardly penguin! You can't seem to keep that guy locked up! 21 fucking episodes. <laughs> penguin, not counting the movie. Only Father O'Hara totally lied to those guys. He was so aiding and abetting, as he immediately goes over to the confession booth that Kane's hiding in to tell him that he's found him passage out of China and to the States to the cutest girls in the world. With the help of Mr. Sam Lowe, you know, the one who always wears the red muffler. So look out for the guy with the red muffler. Red muffler. Red muffler. People were pimping out their cars in 1800s China? Wow, they were way ahead of us here in America. First gunpowder, now this. Red muffler. You go, China! Way to invent red mufflers before they ever were invented. Then cut back to the present for the moment we've all been waiting for. At least the moment I've been waiting for. William Smith's three whip murder chain. It's finally ready with the hickory handle and leather wrist strap and all. You are the king of blacksmiths who make crazy ass weapons for crazy ass people. So it's time for William Smith to test it out, baby. Right here and right now on America's Murder Chain Test Kitchen. And so, without even asking, he just tries it out in this guy's pot. Uh, hope you weren't attached to that. Not a family heirloom or some shit, I hope. Cause smash, he obliterates them. Woo! Ah, this is classic William Smith shit. Who needs a Gatling gun when you can just swing a huge ass chain of death over your head? This is Conan's dad, all right. So cut the cane inside the church as he gets praised for all his good deeds, like returning that chalice and saving Father Dishnok from eternal despair, and even promises to take the Padre to that dead Padre's final resting place on the beach. But before that, let's flash back again to the old days in China, where Cain was still a fugitive monk. It's jungle out there. Hiding out in that Catholic mission where the same Imperial Police return and demand that Father O'Hara turn over Cain, that shallow and monk they're looking for. Cause they're positive he's here. And yeah, he is. He's sitting right there next to... Oh! That kind of red muffler. I'm an idiot too. I belong in Fort Dumbass with no nose in the gang. Perfect timing though, buddy. So Cain bails out the side door as they slap around Father O'Hara. Oh, leave me alone! 
I don't know where Egghead and the Joker are. So we'll cut back to the present again. From inside the church, we hear Captain William Smith calling Kane out. Kane! For a battle to the death. Yeah! Get out here now before he starts picking off random townsfolk. He wants to try his new toy out. He then says fuck it and rides right into church, horse and all. Well, Ober, I want to confess my sins. Now, armed with a huge ass shotgun, William Smith demands that the Padre bring forth Kane, for it's time for them to fight to the death. Because, well, Captain William Smith is crazy, as I've stated, has a huge ego, and loves to kill people in all sorts of interesting ways. Padre demands that he leave, only it's not going to be that easy, Padre. So Kane surrenders himself, just to get him and his horse out of that church. But not before putting his shotgun in this lady's face, so they'll give him that chalice too. Oh yeah, he wants that now. Yeah, couldn't let that go either. Had to steal the chalice too. Hey, does this mean that the dead Padre is being sent back to hell? Boy, he must be confused right now. In the afterlife, with Juno as his caseworker, telling him, nope, sorry Padre, the chalice is gone again because of a series of events caused by you. So back to hell, big boy. For now, anyway, Juno will be in touch. Juno out. So outside in the streets of Missionville, Kane demands that he return that chalice. But, uh, really, Kane? It's not going to be that easy, as he says with this boiling-ass, crazy-ass look in his face. As per usual, he does this so well. Being huge and muscular helps, too. Only one way to get it. So sorry, Kane. Looks like it's one of those you have no other choice but to show off your kung fu panda moves. But before man vs. chain, let's have another flashback. Sure, Kane, you have time to do that. Back in that Catholic church again where we find Father O'Hara after his brutal, slappy beating as his parish tend to his doughy wounds. When Kane comes running in to check on him, and he's all ripshit and like, what the fuck are you doing here, Baldy? I just got the shit slapped out of me by the Riddler and his gang. Just so you could get as far away from here with Mr. Red Muffler as you possibly could. But now, because of your dumb concern, you return to check on me. You bleating bloody idiot. Get the hell out of here, Kane, and to the old west of America. Father O'Hara will be fine. He has friends in high places in China. Hey, he knows the Green Hornet, okay? Now hop the fuck out of here, you little grasshopper. So snap back to the present because it's William Smith swinging a death chain time! Yeah! He makes it look so awesome too, if not totally insane. And out of your mind at the same time. I love it! He swings his heavy ass shit and... Swing and a miss! Then, like jump rope, only with a chain. Then swing, 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 swing! Woo! I'm William Smith, damn it! Woo! Wee! I'm a helicopter! Swinging a crap! Then swinging a hit! Ouch! That can't feel good. Kane then grabs a crowbar of the old west to help defend himself against this chain swinging nut. Smith then goes in for another swing. Kane ducks and uses Mr. Crowbar of the old west to pull Smith's legs out from under him. And he falls with a mighty boosh! But in seconds, he's back up and swinging like a nut again. Yeah! I'm Crazy William Smith with a squeeze chain! Yeah! And when he goes in for his next hit, Kane wraps the chain around Mr. Crowbar of the Owit. And somehow manages to pull Captain William Smith and his massive weight right over him through the air into a full flip onto his back. Boom! Which they show in slow motion too. And is this even them here? This guy's face doesn't look much like William Smith. Looks more like Paul F. Tompkins, if you know who the hell that is. And this doesn't look like David Carradine. And since I'm on the subject, is this even the Padre riding the horse at the beginning? So what do you tell me, this actor was incapable of riding a horse? I guess. But I could be wrong, I don't know, stunt actors maybe? And with that crazy flip, the fight is over. Because William Smith and his chain are out cold. Boom. Enough of that shit. Well that was fun. Short, but fun. His fight with Clint Eastwood was way longer and far more elaborate. That one was more like a Peter vs. the Giant Chicken fight. Now that I think about it. 
But fuck all that, because Kane wins! And once again, returns the chalice to the Padre, hopefully for the last time. Only this time, he does it with this dumb look on his face. Uh, chalice good! Kane did good! I stopped swinging chain man! Fuck the chalice, he should be worshipping that crowbar! Padre Benito probably also made that crowbar, so it works! So cut to later, as Kane plays his big ass flute on the beach. At the gravesite of dead ass Padre Benito, as this Padre finally gets to pay his respects. Then out of Kane's traveling bag he pulls out that stone again, the one that he picked up from Master Poe's grave in the flashback. He's had it with him all his time apparently, and leaves it on the grave of this dead Padre. The whole moral of this episode, all about our attachment to physical things, like your modern day hoarder. So with his work done here, Kane continues on his barefoot journey in search of his half-brother, Kenny Rogers, of the old west, wishing this Padre the best in all his future endeavors. And maybe lock that chalice up in a case or something, so this shit doesn't happen again, or you don't decide to run off with it too. William Smith is probably regaining consciousness right now. And re-stealing it. Oh well, Kane's got wandering and flute playing to do. As this episode ends, with an insightful quote. And that was Kung Fu's Season 2 episode, The Chalice, folks. The one where William Smith is swinging a chain, yeah, and being crazy as he's known to do. Which leads me into my final thoughts of this William Smith episode of another great TV series, Kung Fu. Gilbert Rowland was another big character actor at this time. He played the Padre, and ended with the uncredited Rick Hurst. Cletus Hogg as the freight service worker. Then of course there was Stafford Rep, best known as Chief O'Hara on the 60s Batman, playing the father who was aiding and abetting Kane. And there's this guy, the swinging chain manufacturer, was actor Victor Argo, who was miscredited here as Victor Arco. He was in Quick Change, amongst many other things, like Taxi Driver. And finally Nonos, who I already mentioned. One more weird fact about him and the guy who played Gilchrist. They both played thugs to Doyle Lonigan in the movie The Sting, which came out that very same year. Weird. An interesting fact about this episode, it was written by a guy named William Kelly. He also wrote the story and screenplay for the movie Witness with Harrison Ford. Awesome movie. Similar to this, it has the same feel, I guess. And before I go, I want to give one last hurrah to chain swinging William Smith. One of the greatest character actors ever, ever, ever. The whole reason I chose to review this episode of Kung Fu with his 91st birthday coming up. But anyway, happy birthday, William Smith. I hope you're still resting in peace. And a big thanks again to his wife for mailing me his poetry book. I love this thing. Because in real life, William Smith was nothing like the chain-wielding crazy people that he played. He was a poet and a very intelligent guy. He could speak a dozen languages, blend in, disappear, with any luck, he's got the chalice already. He was just that good at his job. And that will do it for my look at the Kung Fu classic, The Chalice. Or as I like to call it, William Smith swinging his customized death chain over his head. Woo! I love that shit. I could watch that all day. The fight was way too short. Didn't get enough chain swing in action. Anyhow, as usual, thanks again to all my subscribers. And for all the comments. I love getting them. They're mostly all positive, so thanks. I'm all for that. Until next time, adios everyone, and I'll see you at the theater. Woo! <laughs>